dun, 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 dun. So I was playing around with some geometry nodes and I started playing with the geometry proximity modifier and I found out it's pretty easy to do some cool stuff. So to get started, I click on this cube, go over to geometry nodes, hit new. And what I have here is an input and an output. I will not be needing an input for what we're creating here, but what I do need is a grid. So create a grid. When I plug this in, which if you hold option and right click, you can connect them. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is add in a mesh to points node like that. And now we have some points from the vertices of our mesh. So what I'm going to do is bump up the size of that mesh to 10 by 10 and 20 by 20 for the vertices. Now we have more vertices. The next step there is I'm going to create a instance on points. So everything went away because it's trying to instance something. So what we want to instance is a cube. So now I have my cube, plug that into the instance. The cube is overlapping because it's a little bit too big. So if we bring it down to something like 25, uh, actually that might be perfect, 0.5. So that's cool. So now we have all these cubes that are pretty close together. If I add in a set position of the grid, I can then use the geometry proximity modifier node. Actually, I'm a little ahead of myself. Let's add a UV sphere first. So I have a UV sphere, I'm gonna shade it smooth. And if we click back on our object, and we can pin this so that if we click on the UV sphere, it doesn't go away. Um, we can drag our UV sphere directly in here, so we have the object info. What we want to do is plug the geometry into the offset of the position. The position offset does exactly what it says. It offsets the position of everything. But if you plug something like a texture in here, you would notice that it is individually manipulating the instances. So what we can do is when you plug the geometry into this target, we now have the distance of this proximity modifier. So uh, if I grab our sphere, oh, we wanna make sure this is relative. So if we grab our sphere, it's now moving in relationship to the object, the proximity of the object, if you will. Um, but what we can do to control it a little bit more is we can add in a math node, vector math, and change this to multiply. So what we do have now is everything that is in this proximity node is being multiplied by zeros on every axis, but we can change it to only affect the Z axis by putting a one there. And so now, uh, we have cool little, um, cool little animation there. And if we change this to negative one, we get the opposite, which is also pretty cool. I think I changed this to something like 0.5. Uh, scaled the ball down a bit. Um, zero up a location. Scaled the ball down and then moved it up. So mine went up and down, but you can do something cool, going left and right, you know, however you want. Also, you can move this part down so that you can see things a little bit better. I realized the instances, so when you realize these instances, you can then set a material that's gonna affect all of them as one object. So I'll just do that material. Um, it doesn't like me, okay. Um, and I just like the look of subdivided guys. Okay, so now we're gonna switch over to Cycles Renderer. What I did for the shading of this was I 
Uh, so this is a site I like that has different color palettes. So if you see a color palette, what's cool is you can screenshot this guy. I'm just gonna pop that on my desktop and then if I open it, And this is cool because I can just hit E over any color and then select on my color palette what I want it to be. So what I did for this one was I created a color ramp that went through a wave texture that used the Z axis. Yeah, I used the object and then I took this scale down to like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4. Um, so then I have that and then if you actually hit Alt E while you're over the color in the color rip, you can select multiple. Uh, and then hit enter when you're done, and you will have color ramp with those. Also, I think mine might have had maybe more vertices in it. Uh, so you can see these are crossing over again, so I'm gonna go 0.25 like that. Yeah, that's kind of the gist of it. After that, I just animated it, and that's the whole thing, but really simple setup here. Here's the final look if you wanna see that uh that's it thanks for watching